Hello there, everybody. <laughs> Mike always has to do something to get me a laugh when we start off the show. I don't know why, but... It's fun, that's why. <laughs> Welcome to the March 5th, 2013 Fellowship of the Geeks podcast. Uh, my name is Thomas Chick, and you've already seen Mike Marlowe. Say hello to the fo- folks. Hello to the folks. And say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. And joining us, the new and improved Les Webster. Good evening, one. <laughs> uh, great no to have longer. you back. He's oh, no thank you. Cyclops. <laughs> That's true. We'll call him Biclops. There you go, Biclops. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I'm hearing that feedback again. I don't know what the problem is. It's got to be who uh, hangout thing. It's not that loud, so we'll work. Okay. Uh, we don't have James Pickering tonight. Hopefully he'll maybe join us later. Uh, if not, that's fine. Uh, please check out his website, a galaxy called Dallas.com. It's a pretty cool website. And James, hope all is well. Uh, a couple, uh, one or two things we want to go into before we start talking about the main thing tonight. Um, kind of want to do a follow up uh, to our subject we talked about two weeks ago regarding the Orson Scott Card uh, Adventures of Superman, uh, the controversy because there has been an an update uh, that kind of broke late this afternoon. Uh, Chris Browse, who was to to do the the artwork for the the story, uh, announced that he was not doing it uh, due to the, the 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 media kind of backlash. Backlash, uh, and he felt it was taken away from the story, so he he just felt that you know. This was, you know, he felt that he needed to back out of it. Uh, that you know, that he he has a nice relationship with DC and hope it continues and all and all that. And DC later came out with a statement saying that they respect his wishes and and agree that they have a good relationship and they'll see you know, uh, you know, we'll see more of his work down the road and that. The story by card is being pulled for now until they can get an artist, uh, so they can line up an artist to do the story. So as of right now, that that story will not be in the first issue. Um, of a standalone comic. Of the, well, it was supposed to be originally a digital, and then it would be it's going to be it's going to be compiled and put into into a uh, print. So. Um, of course, you know, what do you guys think of that, of that little uh, update uh, about what he, what he decided to do and, he, and all that? It's awfully convenient for DC, really. Oh, this is a perfect excuse for them to just decide, you know, you know what? We decided we don't want to do it. Um, I, you know, I thought about that, too. And and they may eventually decide to do that, and who who knows? So, I'm I'm not sure about that. Uh, I know DC has dropped stories before from various artists or writers, but I've got a feeling that they're not using this one as a as an out. Uh, I know why Chris Sprouse decided to back out. I can understand that because if there was such a furor or a uh, that's not the word, just a controversy over this, then I can understand. I, then I can understand that uh, you don't want to be in something that's going to cause disruption in either your work uh, plans or in the, the publishers. Okay. Well, I don't think we're saying we're saying that they will go. The DC would go about and just just go ahead and kill the story. 
I know that's what some people would like for them to do, but oh, that's exactly what they wanted to do. That's this, yeah. It just Mike and I were saying that you know if they decide to go that way, then here's. Here's 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 a perfect out where it doesn't look like they are bowing to public demand. Yeah. True. Yeah, it's just it's convenient timing for them. It it lets them get out of it without having to look like they're getting out of it. And yep. honestly, I mean, to a certain extent, I don't blame them for wanting to get out of it, given the back, the backlash about it. So. It's, it's it's a controversial thing all of a sudden, and I think probably more way more so than they thought it would be. And so this this gives them the out that they need. Yep. And if, if they can do it peaceably and not raise a ruckus, so good for them on that in that regard. I mean, I kind of wish they would stick to their guns, but whatever. Well, we'll see. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not completely dead, and it not you know not behind us. They could they could still find. Someone who may want to go ahead and do the story anyway, and that and that's the sad thing because you know we don't know what the story is going to be. It may have been really really good story, but you know because of all this, there, there's going to be people who not want to want to read it. But that's we've already gone over that two weeks ago. So uh, if you hadn't seen if you hadn't seen that, uh, feel free to go back to uh, our previous uh, show section. Or go to our YouTube page and watch it. Uh, Mike and I had—I think Mike and I had a pretty good discussion about it. Uh, didn't get any negative feedback, so that's that's a good thing. So, <laughs> yay! Um, second thing I wanted to pub this weekend. Um, here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, we have the Alcon convention. It starts up this Friday. At Eleven o'clock. That's going to be what March eighth. It runs March eighth through the tenth uh, at the Crow Crown. Crown. I'm sorry. I knew I was going to mess it up. Crown Hotel in Addison. Uh, Les and I will be there. We can hopefully we'll be able to drag Mike there Saturday. Yeah, not probably not going to happen. But anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> We'll drag him kicking and screaming, No! 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 <laughs> so, and this is... Bless you. This will be our first time to this particular convention, and so we're kind of a little excited to see how, how this thing is going to go. That's not the only reason we're excited. Why is it, Mike? I don't know. You tell us. No, you tell us. No, no, no. I'm not going. Remember, it's your party. Oh, it's my party. Oh, well, knock it off. Happen. Just tell me. <laughs> Somebody's going to be part of a panel. Yeah, I I have been invited to be a part <laughs> of a of the podcast summit panel that takes place uh, Saturday. Evening from five to seven p.m. Uh, don't remember which room it is. If you go to uh, all dash con dot org, uh, the the schedule's up there. Check out check out who all is going to be there. There's a ton of stuff going on. There's workshops, panels. Of course, there's dealers. Uh, and uh, so running until like two or three in the morning every night. Too. Oh yeah, there's there's like co the concerts and 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 da uh, dancing, uh, yeah. So dances and and, and just everything. There's just, there is something for everything. That's why it's called all con. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it covers all of geek culture pretty well. Yeah, from what I understand, that's what it looks like to me. We'll find out firsthand. We're going Friday, right, Les? Yes, sir. All right. Cool. So um, tonight what we wanted to kind of talk about was uh, I had seen, I guess it was roughly after our last episode, 
uh, a posting on Reddit, and I can post a link on our show notes for y'all to check out later on. Uh, it's uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick, who's the writer of Captain Marvel, uh, Avengers Assemble, both those are for Marvel, of course, and Ghost for Dark Horse. And I think that's all she's doing right now. But uh, someone had asked a question regarding uh, questioning why, why there, there's not more successful female solo superhero titles that are not derivative of a male character. And um, if I'm not, if I remember it correctly, they also talk about why is there no female, all female teams? Am, it, am I remembering that correctly? And uh, anyway, it, it, the that was that you know that was basically a question. It was regarding why are why are female titles not as successful as as the male titles and she had a pretty in length discussion or, or not a discussion but an answer and it actually in, in some cases it kind of opened my eyes because the first thing I thought of is just um, well you know the reader, re, you know, the readers are primarily male but that's really not the case anymore I mean the females are uh, are coming in and and but if I'm remember correctly, she says talking about how manga seems to be very popular with the female uh, readers because it's more it's not just superhero it's it could be any genre or, or you know any uh, type storyline yes thank it, you. It, it could be supernatural. It could be a doctor. It could be a model. It could be anything. Yeah. But uh, the thing that really kind of uh, piqued me was, uh, yeah, there's the whole thing with readers and, and the whole thing with publishers, but I hadn't thought about the whole responsibility of retailers. I, why I hadn't thought about that. But, you know, as we, Mike and I had kind of discussed on a previous show, you know, retailers are going to order what they think is going to sell, and if they have the mindset that th these books are not going to sell, they're not going to order, so they're not going to sell. So it's a vicious cycle, and you're just like, how do we break that? I think she had a good answer to that, and that was the readers. Yep. To, to pre-order things. If you see something that's going to be coming up, pre-order it. That way you're assured that it's going to hit the stands for you. Granted, they have to have so many pre-orders, but uh, it goes a lot smoother if a, a retailer knows about how many. If, if a retailer gets requests, 20 requests for a title, <clears throat> excuse me, then they will probably order 25 to have some on the shelves for walk-ins. Uh, that's what happened with The Walking Dead. People weren't reading The Walking Dead until the TV series came on, then all of a sudden everybody and their dog was wanting it, and retailers had to find out what pre-orders were going to be before they could establish themselves as a typical purchase for each month. And in, in her letter, she was saying pre-order, and that way uh, something will have a chance to make it. And I think that's that's very essential. That's true, but she also she also had mentioned about you know it's it's a risk on a reader to to say okay I'm I want to I want to get this I want to pre-order this book and then there's three or four dollars there. <laughs> For a book that you don't know if you're going to even like, because you're having to pre-order two or three months down the road. 
But luckily, you are not when you pre-order. You're not handing them your money then. Well, it's when the book comes in that you hand them your three or four dollars. Well, it depends. I think it depends on who, uh, which stories you do with deal with. Because I know, uh, I know of one off the top of my head that wants like fifty percent down on really? whatever you pre-order. Now that I don't think that goes for a sub list, but you know, if you're ordering, if you're doing, uh, if you're putting a book on your sub list, that's one thing. But if you're just saying, I want to order this book, they're wanting fifty percent down. Okay, and that's that's kind of unusual. I don't know of many stores that would even try that. Well, I'm not saying a lot do, but I just I know of one. So I mean, there may be more than one right. out there. Yeah. So, 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 but, but yeah, I, that's the way I thought before. It was just that, you know, you go you go to your favorite your your, your local comic book store and say, hey, I'm interested in this book, and they'll put you down and they'll order it, and then when it comes in, you'll you buy it. I mean, that's that's how I've experienced it. Since you know, for the last twenty years, since since I've been able to know exactly what's coming out ahead of time and say, "Oh, I'm interested." So, well, if you're uh, if you're pre-ordering it, then to me, you are just you're you're setting yourself up for uh, receivership of this. And if you decide that you don't want the next one, you just tell them. Uh, it's over. And as far as a store goes wanting 50%, if you're ordering a $40 book, yes, I can understand that. But if you're ordering a comic book and they want $2 before you... Well, you like it, I it's, said... I, it's absurd. Well, I... I to me. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's how they handle that for just individual books. I'm just saying that's what I know. That's what I have that is what I have, I have, have heard. Okay. I mean, it's it was. It, I mean, it's it's on their website. So I mean, you know, if you order stuff from if you order stuff from previews, then they want fifty percent down. So I they don't have it broken down that well. It's just the specialty order items, or you're just wanting wanting, you know. Okay. A special one shot. So I'm, you know, it, it may they may not for something like a three or four dollar book, and we're kind of getting it lost into that. We, you know, kind of need to get back into talking about uh, the female characters. Yes. So why do you, why do you, why do you think? Do, do you agree with what she was what she's saying? I mean, yeah, you talk about Supergirl is popular, Batgirl is popular, but they are derivatives of male characters. Uh, obviously, Wonder Woman is not. She is her own character, and she's been successful, but, you know, there's several other female characters that they're not derivative. They've, they've had chances to, of a solo title or being in a solo book, and they've not lasted as long, but... Why is it just the writing, or just no one's noticing it, or what? Personally, I think that they, we still look at it like it's a male readership, and they want to make sure that they cover the male readers. Uh, Ghost is a very good title, and I've always enjoyed it. Uh, but it's one of those that if they toss a uh, a girly type uh, cover on it, people are going to buy it. Although it does not lean on that as far as a story. Yeah, that's not important to their story. Uh, but it is it is that feeling that guys are the ones that buy comics. We know different. Women do buy comics and I think it's great. And I think they should. I think we need a bigger readership, and that's that goes for all ages. They're trying to to draw readers in when you're still charging three to four dollars a comic is kind of tough. Yeah, 
Mikey. Uh, uh, uh. I, 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 I'll be honest, I kind of don't get it. I mean, I don't... I don't understand why... I mean, if you're trying to draw in 13-year-old boys, why would be... Why would putting Superman on the cover of a book sell you more copies than putting Supergirl on the cover of a book. And I don't, I mean, I like to think I know what a 13-year-old boy thinks like, or with, or however you want to phrase that. I, 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 I don't know. I don't quite get why it doesn't work as well. I mean, because historically it doesn't, and I don't I mean, we're 40 years past women's lib. What's the deal? What's the, what's the lag time? I mean, I don't know. I don't get it. Somebody explain it to me. Well, I, I think in her letter, though, or in her comments, she was mainly designating Marvel for this problem rather than all publishers. Well, she that, went, that's she went what's, after Marvel. Well, she went after Marvel because that's where she does most of her writing for her. She works right. For yeah. So she can't really she can't really speak for DC. The question was about Marvel specifically was the deal. Yeah. Why do you think it's been so difficult for Marvel to establish a female hero who isn't? But the, it, it can apply for DC as well. Outside of Wonder Woman, I mean, look at what they've got right now. Well, you've got you got several titles that are not that are, are female oriented or female driven by DC that are not that are not based on males. Even some of their short stuff, like they did Looker, they did uh, Phantom Lady, uh, they they've done. Uh, the Earth Two series, um, and they have characters like Power Girl. But although everybody says that's just Superman, it's different than Superman because she at one time was Atlantean based. She was supposedly from Atlantis and had some other powers. Is it Zatanna is uh, is not based on a male. Yeah, she's the offspring of a, a former character, but she's had her own series and done quite well. But with Marvel, you had Ms. Marvel, which disappeared, unfortunately, because that was about the only female title they had. Well, to 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 counter what you just said, um, Looker and Phantom Ladies were not really all that successful. I mean, yeah, they the Phantom Lady just had a miniseries, but you know, I was looking at the numbers, there was like eight thousand copies or so each ordered. That's not that impressive considering considering other titles. Uh, Power Girl, I mean, originally Power Girl was Earth 2 Superman's cousin, and that's basically what they've kind of gone back to. Same thing with Huntress. Okay. Okay. So, um, really, let, let, yeah, you got, so you got that, that's World's Finest. So let's look at the other female titles. You got Supergirl. Mm -hmm. You've got Batgirl. Okay. Uh,. You had Swords of Sorcery, but that book's been canceled. Uh, Birds of Prey, that's that's a successful title, but you also have Batgirl in there. But you also have Black Canary, who's that's a you know that's that's a solo t t different character. So, okay, I'll give you that. And of course, you got Wonder Woman. Yeah, um, Catwoman. A Catwoman, but there's. A tie to Batman, so there, there's a tie, but it's not based on a male character. It's not based on a male character, but if it wasn't a Batman villain, 
or anti-hero, would it still be successful? I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I mean, well, if if it was a generic, if it was just if it was just a regular villain, let's you know, let's say. I, I got a question. Yes, sir. Let's. How how much it? How does the, how does Catwoman's success compare to say Nightwing's? As far as selling books. Uh, I would have to go back and look at the numbers, but uh. Because that to me seems like a, a reasonably fair comparison because both characters started out in the Batman world mm -hmm. and have spun off into their own thing. Let me let me do a little here. research. This might prove interesting. I got a feeling that Nightwing is probably ahead in numbers. Uh, but that's because it's a extremely well known character. I mean that Catwoman has been around since early uh, Batman comics, and yes, there was a Catman that fought him at one time, but they were totally different people, different styles. One was just a a crook, and one is a burglar, and that was the major difference between those two. A burglar's not a crook. Well, in the, the sense that Catman would go after uh, robbing a, an amusement park where Catwoman is wanting diamonds or things okay. so, so you're based on cat, cat items. Right, so we're talking about the difference between a, like a cat burglar and an armed robber. Yes, sir. Okay. I figure if we can fiddle with the semantics long enough, Tom will have time to look up what he's looking for. <laughs> okay. Um, in 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 January, because February's numbers are not up yet, they probably be will here to be in the, in the next couple of days. Gotta love a live show. Mm -hmm. uh, Nightwing ranked twentieth out out of out of orders. When that that is an estimated. 60, 69,643. Um, let's see if I can find Catwoman here. A very precise estimated number. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a, a cool website. It's Comicron.com. And they have all the, they have the numbers. Um, Sweet. And actually, Nightwing... Yeah, I said Nightwing's twentieth and Batgirl seventeenth. It has about another two two thousand more copies ordered. Um, Catwoman comes in sixty fourth with thirty thirty three nine fifteen. So under half. There you go. That that surprises me. This I'm gonna say something controversial. Woohoo! Because I'm pretty sure that's why you guys have me on. <laughs> um, but I find myself wondering, and I think this applies to both Marvel and DC. Um, since I mean, and I'm I'm gonna go with the 13 year old boy thing again. I mean, if that's really your target audience, and I'm honestly not sure it really is anymore. I don't think I don't think it is. I think it's I think it's a little older than that. Um. But it seems as if, in in their if in their major effort to appeal to more of an all ages type audience and try to spread the, the love, as it were, I suspect that they're making conscious efforts to not sexualize the female characters. And I hesitate to go as far as to say that's hurting them, but I think it is probably having an influence. Um, I think, I mean, I mean, and I'll, I'll pull another example out of the, out of, out of thin air here, sort of, not to plug our old buddies, but I mean, if you look at the covers, if you look at the, the last cover of Catwoman and you look at the cover of basically any of the Xenoscope titles, there's a difference. Yeah. I mean, and Xenoscope doesn't really make any bones about the fact that they put attractive women on their covers on purpose. Um, Marvel and DC don't do it that way. And 
I don't know. I mean, how much is that influencing it? How much difference can that be making? I don't know. It, it uh, could make a big difference because of uh, uh, Lady Death, as an example. Lady Death covers are extremely lascivious as far as I'm concerned, yet... Gesundheit. But those are titles that are picked up by uh, older men, older as in above 20, that are buying that rather than a 13 or 14 year old because it doesn't appeal to them in that state or in that, that uh, version. Uh, I think that a lot of the stuff that is out there is is not geared for for the 13 year old anymore either. In fact, her letter, didn't she make a statement in her comments about the, the basis of people now is a much older group and that new readership needs to be brought in both male and female and all of all ages yeah she did say something like yeah yeah she talked about that um, hang on a second because I'm doing a little bit more research here um, Taking a look at these numbers again from, from January. Like I said, uh, February is not up yet since today's only the 5th. But looking at the titles, the, now these are, are, these are the numbers that were ordered by retailers. So these are not books that were actually, well, th these are books that are sold from Diamond to retailers, not retailers to the actual consumers. Yes. Um, the highest non uh, derivative of a, of a male character, a male superhero character on this list is Wonder Woman, and she's ranked at 51 with 40,105 copies ordered. That's DC. For Marvel, it's Captain Marvel. The former Miss Marvel that you mentioned last, she's ranked 103 at 19,151, and that's the title that Kelly Sue is writing. So, yeah, yeah, she was based on a, a character. The power, the yeah, the powers and all that's based off of Marvel, yes. So, Captain women, Marvel, so so quote unquote original. Women characters didn't break the top fifty. Nope. Because I'm I'm looking here. The, let me look at. You got Batgirl at seventeen. Uh, and quite honestly, hell, hang on. Was Ghost listed? Uh, let me check. Wonder Woman's at fifty-one. Um. Uh, so really, Batgirl is only only female female solo in the top fifty. You got Batgirl at seventeen. Let me check that again. I'm drawing a blank. Who's writing Batgirl right now? You're drawing a blank. Are, are you, you seriously? I'm try oh, yeah, it's one of those. It's, I feel like I should Gail know. Gail Simone. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, like I said, I feel like I should know this. <laughs> That's why it's drawn a blank. Not just me not paying attention to the world. Or... Hmm. That comes later. Uh, Batwoman's at 63 and Catwoman's at 64. World's Finest, which is the Power Girl Huntress, is at 68. Supergirl is at 69. Uh, Buffy comes in at 88 Woo. and then Birds of Prey 89 so so really if you think about it the first non-derivative character past Wonder Woman is Buffy yeah unless you want to uh, you know. what's she derivative of herself 
Yeah. I think that counts. No. Yeah, she's non derivative. She's an original character. Yeah. Uh I was just curious. Is Ghost on the list? Um, yeah, I'm. Tr I'm trying to look right now. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's not a problem. Not nearly. Because that, that's a totally. That's something totally by itself. Yeah. Um. If Ferris ranks at 121, and that's that's all females. I yeah. mean, it's not really superhero, but it's but but still, it's a female. Total female title. It's a female-driven title. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ghost ranks at 195. And that is... 7,981 copies ordered. Wow. And that's a shame because it is a good title. It's a good book. That's not to say there aren't some good female characters in other titles out there. No, no, we're not seeing that, but, you know, but typically, you know, I, I don't know. Well, and ultimately her point was that really the end user, the consumer, ends up not being what gets measured here. Yeah. I mean, like you said, this list is based on what retailers order from Diamond. And they're and they're going by So ultimately history. the manage, the manager of managers of comic book stores in the United States are who we're measuring them here. And these are the people that are buying what they think they can sell. Um Unfortunately, they're in a position where they're all very small businesses and they're not going to take a whole lot of risks. So they're right. not going to test the market to see if they can sell X copies of Ghost because they have no idea. And so if they order any, it's only going to be a few. And they may fly off their shelf in 10 minutes. But, I mean, unless they have subscriptions, they're not going to risk it. It's not going to be enough for them to risk it next month either. But I think a good retailer will check their stock uh, before the next issues of, say, Ghost comes out and see if they sold those five copies from last month. And if they sold three of them, then they know that they can order maybe four and be good. Or if they see that all five are gone, they may have even had somebody come in and say, do you have the latest issue of such and such, of Ghost? And the retailer will probably think to add one or two to the original five order. Right, but could they have added <clears throat> like 10 or 15 to that original five order and still sold them? And they're not going to know that, and they're not going to risk it. No, because true. They're, we're, they're spending their money here. Yeah, they get a they get them at a discount, but they don't get that much a great discount. Right. And that's a shame. We could start talk, talking about um, controlling an industry and all the monopolies. But that's probably a different show. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, but where are we going to get that much whipped cream and Bluetooth uh, at this time of night? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice pickup. <laughs> Narf. <laughs> that one deserved a drink, apparently. Yes. Round for everyone. Well, I think she's right, and but I think... We have to make the effort to get more readers of all ages in. And this that deserve a drink. And, yeah. And, <laughs> and I think that this will uh, give you a be better chance for a female-driven title. Uh, if you've read Saga, Saga is very female-driven also. 
Although there are males in the cast, of course, as are all are in all of the female driven titles. But in this one, in Saga, it's a little different than just uh, female to the rescue. It is characters actually intertwining and, and making something, making making a story. Sorry, I'm rambling. So. No, you're fine. It's, I mean, it's it's a science fiction story, and it's a science fiction story about a family in a war torn area trying to survive with obviously the entire universe against them. And As told by the by the child. And yeah, spoiler alert. Well, <laughs> now that's a, that's explained in the first issue. So yeah, pretty much. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, a lot of what you get is maternal instinct kicking in because they're under attack constantly. And so yeah, it's it's a little different paradigm than the female superhero. And I don't know. I, You're right. I'm not convinced there's just a hell of a lot of great superhero stories going on out there. There are some. But I think Marvel and DC glut the market so badly with them that it's hard to find. If it's not Marvel and DC, it's almost impossible for anybody else to compete. But a, a good retailer will also know clientele that they have. I know of one uh, retailer that if I walk in, I will be offered things that I wouldn't even have thought about before, but they said, well, I, I looked at this and I thought that you might like this. And I tried out and I go, you're right. Keep me up with it. Others. Don't you wish they were all like that? I do. But, but those are the people that need to pay attention to what's going on around them. They just can't say that, hi, I run a store and I'm going to sit back and, and, uh, do my ordering the way I want it. Yes, I'm sorry, we're getting off topic again. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't say anything. I'm not sure we are. I mean, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't I think, think so. Is, I think this is a large part. What, what we're talking about now is a large part of what drives the numbers that we've been talking about. Yeah. And there are even other factors we could go off into. But yeah, I mean, it, it would be wonderful if every comic book shop owner had the time to run a small business because they, they're not allowed to be big businesses apparently for whatever reason like I said probably a different show um, and also have time to read at least a noticeable portion of what they're bringing in every week and 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 know their customers well enough in, individually to be able to recommend good books to them and that's all that's an awful lot to ask yes it is but there are some that will attempt it anyway. Oh right. And, and I think that's great. That's and it's and it, it hits me like being Norm going into Cheers. People know who you are, and they always respond to you as you walk in the door. That that's a great feeling too. Less. <laughs> yeah, my answer is always what. But. Uh, those are the people that know their clients and know how to to order tighter, yet they know better. They, they know if a uh, Xenoscope title will be a big seller on their shelves. Some of them would, would order three, some would order 15. It just depends on what you have around you. And uh, I think that you we're know, getting back to Marvel and DC. Maybe they'll flood us with Marvel and DC all the time, and let's spend a couple of dollars out here and there to bring in some unknowns. Yeah, unknowns. Unknowns. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Did we solve the problem? problem? Yes. And there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good stuff out there that are not done by those two particular companies. Or well, you guys have done a lot of reviews of good titles out there, and that makes a difference. And they're they're the lesser known titles, and I think that's advantageous for us. That way, we know what's going on around us too. Dead air. Dead air. I know. I know. Sorry about that. I was just checking something here. Um, you mentioned Saga. Yes, sir. I was ranked 38th. At 45,629 copies. That's, that's nothing to sneeze at. It's a damn good book. Yep. Yes, it is a good book. Very entertaining. So. But there are, there are some issues like Super Crooks, which was a four-issue series, but it was a really entertaining story. Uh you got Saga, you've got so many different small ones, and that is, is tremendous. Dead air. Dead air. I'm waiting for Mike to say something, but that's okay. Why? I don't know. <laughs> So, did we solve it? No. Of course not. Oh. I thought we were supposed to be solving the world's problems here. I guess not. Um, I really don't have much much more to say. I, I think y'all, I think y'all said it and said it a lot better than I would have said it. So. Uh, again, I will post a link to the source material for tonight's show on in our show notes for y'all to t take a look at, and, and especially read not only what she had to say, but the responses. And and I, this thing went on for pages, pages. But you know, if you're familiar with Reddit, then you you know exactly that what that's all about. Um. Before we kind of before we sign off tonight, uh, I did want to bring up that uh, comic craziness is going on. First rounds going on. Uh, need to have need to have we need to have your uh, picks and and reasons by noon central time, uh, the seventh. That's that's so that's less than forty eight hours away. Um, I'm kind of excited about this since we went with, since I decided to go with uh, pulp characters this time. Uh, I know I did get someone kind of upset because it, I had Shadow versus Tarzan, and it, <laughs> it couldn't pick which one because they were they were his favorites. <laughs> so he, he could just. <laughs> So that's not well, fair. <laughs> they were random, though. They were those are random positions, so it wasn't. Oh like yeah, yeah, I know. You weren't trying to stack it by any means. That's the worst complaint you get. We're doing good. Oh yeah. Well, I I sent a response back saying that I had actually plugged all the all of the names into a uh, bracket generator and set set it to random, so it decided who was fighting who. So the back computer. You know, <laughs> cool. So, uh, if y'all want to participate, please do. We we would we would love for you to do it. It's it's always fun. It's always interesting to see uh, uh, seed responses. Um, and like I said, uh, the first round ends 
uh, March 7th at noon central time. And that's because we're in central time. That's right. And then the next round will start. I'll, I'll post the second round uh, pretty early the 8th since we will be busy at all con for who knows how long that day. So it'll be posted early. So uh, please join in and have the f have some fun. The, these things, I'm kind of glad that we've been doing them because it's been interesting just to see how uh, how they turn out. And I'm trying to think of something different to do next year because I kind of like the fact that we didn't use traditional superheroes this year, that we did pulp heroes. So I'm trying to see if I can come up with something a little bit uh, unique for next year. Uh, if you got anybody out there in the audience has these suggestions, feel free to email me. Uh, I'll take a look at them and see if there's any possibility of, of being able to put together a, a, a bracket based on that theme. Uh, and feel and, and please uh, email us with any kind of comment, suggestion, any kind of feedback to us. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, we do appreciate you following us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash uh, Fellowship the Geeks. Uh, we're on Twitter at, at Fellowship Geeks, which Mike has been has been super incredible in, in getting more followers for us, and I appreciate that, Mike. Mm. And we're on Google+, Plus, which I'm trying to be a little bit more active on, trying to get generate a little bit more interest there. Um, there's just not a lot of activity on Google Plus and it, it's a shame because it seems like it's a pretty cool little uh, platform. platform. Thank you. So, uh, Y'all have anything before we sign off for the evening? Uh, sorry we missed James tonight. Uh, uh, please uh, check out his website at uh, a galaxy called Dallas .com, and hopefully James can join us on our next show. Uh, Y'all got anything? Is he going to the con? Um, you know what? I don't know. He might be burned out on cons. He's done a few lately. He's done like two or three in a row. Uh, I know. I know he did the Sci Fi Expo, and then he did Con DFW after that. Um, he may, excuse me, he may go just to partake rather than have a table set up. I know he'll have a table at, at the, um, the one in April, the, the one day, uh, uh, the North, the North Texas, uh, Comic-Con. Uh, he's going to be, he'll be there with Thomas Branch and, um, uh, Uh, and one of his writers that he, that he's he's that he promotes, and I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now, and I apologize for that. Uh, but I know he'll be doing that show. Uh, yeah, he may he may be just showing up, just kind of check things out, but I don't know that for a fact. Well, and speaking of cons, we're catching everybody on the rebound from Emerald City right now. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Holy crap! <laughs> Twitter was a blaze with Emerald City stuff, man. There was a crap load of people there. Yeah. Really? Oh, oh yeah. Man. Oh man. There were there were artists and writers and just freaking everybody flying out to Seattle for that one. Uh, I had heard complaints of waiting lines for at least two or three hours. They were for and this was like for Friday. They've they've not experienced this before. It's almost like what we went through last May. With that, with Dallas Comic Con here, with the explosion. Uh, yeah. So, so it's nice. It's nice to hear that that con's doing it's real well. And yep. But it's been a good con for several years. Well, apparently it's it's taken on a new form because. Because uh, the the big publishers are showing up there and they're breaking news there. Uh, I mean, so kind of, kind, of a, kind of a pre-show for San Diego. 
Yeah. Good for them. Yep. I think so. Les, do you have anything before we sign off for the evening? No, I don't know of anything. Again, welcome back, sir. We've missed oh, you. No, oh, thanks. I miss being there. He missed him, too. He missed him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep swinging, I keep missing. Swing and a miss. Won't be just, long. Just a bit outside. He was trying to paint the corner there. Yep. <laughs> We could go off topic and start talking about the whole thing with the Rangers and Nolan Ryan, but no, that's that's going to take about another hour at least. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, with with on that note, we will go ahead and say good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you were with us here live tonight, or if you're watching this replay, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, please spread the word about us. We're, we're, we're the little engine that could. Uh, we're trying. Uh, One of these days, we're going to have like 2 million people watching us, and we're going to look back at these days and go, holy cow, what were we thinking? Anyway, sorry. I do that I, every day. I, I was about to say, that's what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> So until next time, guys, uh, y'all take it easy. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Uh, peace out. Good night. Happy trails. Good night.